Uh, today we will discuss about content of engineering Alex, what it uh, really deals with. Start the first topic. Alex includes. Different parts. First one is the force and movements. Ten movements. Determine range and number. So on a particle. Or rigid body, or E for memory body. Second thing that we will discuss is the center of mass. Centroid of length or a curve and, and volume and movement of inertia. Then we will discuss process, truss, frame, and machine. Then we will discuss about bending, movement, and shear force. Talk about friction and its application. And finally, we will talk about. This is what uh, generally forms the, the syllabus for engineering studies. However, you will divert the Now, what, what is the purpose of engineering uh, studies? So, first of all, if you define the engineering method. So it defines as a science where it is a type of science which describes types the state of rest or motion of a body body movement of a body under the influence of
now if you see that here like you can this body that you would want can be of different types first one is different types of bodies that may be okay, particle then you may have Then you have before level body, body. Then you have now you will see that you know in this condition it should be called and in this condition it should be called. So the mechanics related with all these are also called you know, mechanics of particle mechanics of body so they themselves are the component of engineering mechanics with all these particular uh, like body uh, bodies what we try to do how these particular body uh, changes its shape or react to the uh, influence or under the influence of forces or moments which are applied. Now coming back to first part of you know, engineering mechanics that six important. Principle in engineering mechanics. First one is the law of parallel program to find the addition of forces and all. Second. Principle of trans me C carbon Newton's C laws of motion. Which includes three, one, two, three, four, five, and last one is the gravitational law. And so these six, one, two, there, there are three laws, three, four, five, and six. These six laws are very very important to understand the concept of engineering mechanics. Okay. Now let us talk about what are the fundamental quantities which are which are associated fundamental mental quantities which require to specify or to obtain to express or to obtain the state of body. So first one that you require is of course the space, you know, the quantity which are it's a coordinate x y z. Then you require this time. Okay, so there will be. Then you require mass of the body or particle of this body. Then, and 
and then the full assembly would be shown. So if you are having the knowledge of all these demands, you can interpolate, inter, uh, intercorrelate the quantities with for example, x, y, cat can be correlated with velocity and accelerate with the help of this time, mass and the forces are in, like correlated with help of this time. Have these quantities, you can easily get the relationship of uh, all the quantities to know the relationship. All right. So, knowing all this, what should be our first goal to understand to understand the state of to understand the state of thrust and speed right now in engineering statics we will talk about the state of thrust so under this condition what is the first and foremost objective under static engineering statics statics objective is to One to find the equivalent equivalent or resultant force or movement of all the forces acting. On a particle or present body. So this should be our first goal. And second goal is to find the equilibrium condition. Under which the forces are the forces find the equilibrium condition under which the forces keep the body. And static equilibrium. Okay. So, so what it will really be? It will lead to the relationship between different. Under static forces, static Okay, so these two are at most, you know, the these two are main objective of engineering statics. So let us first talk about how to find the resultant of the force. Find the resultant of two forces. What are the different techniques which are available? For example, is the Lego law. So let's say if you have been given one force P, okay, and like this. So how you will write the parallelogram law? 
how you play them, okay? This is what you do by Q, that's what you do. Okay? So that you will draw lines that may be there and parallel to there. Okay? And this is what R is the most similar to that. This is what is called parallel ground law. Second law in this line that is one thing is parallel law. In this case, the same thing that you can write in terms of a triangle. R will be here. E plus Q on the word form, let's say. Another triangle that one can form is this curves there. Two. Then you have C. These two are very, very famous law for finding out the resultant of the triangle. Now, this line. Third uh, technique here is the cosine law. Laws law of cosine. So taking a triangle of let's say of this type, P Q and your R, this is your R, this is your Q, this is your P, let's say this is A. C. So, law of cosine says that r square magnitude of r square is nothing but magnitude of p square plus q square minus 2 pq cos of angle p, which is of course r, which means that is fourth sine law. Sine law is even more. So in this way, what you will be having is P by opposite angle, let's say magnitude of P, divided by angle sine C, and angle A, R, and This way it will form, you know, this is called the sine law. And finally, you can also do it by finding it. The vector, vectorial addition and subtraction. So writing all the x component, right? Add all the x component. Say i to n, and find out all the plus y component. I to the one to n, then the resultant R V square plus summation of the right. And your angle ten theta is equal to summation of Y, of course, where I I will be there, one to n. Here also, if you want, you can write I is equal to one to n, I is equal to one to n, and summation of I is equal to one to n, F I, six one one. So we just discussed about these five different ways to find out the resultant of two forces. If we have to find out the resultant of you know more than two forces, how we can? If we have to find out the resultant of four forces, the 
the pencil more than two forces. The first one is it repeated rules of triangle angle angular law. And second one is by polygonal law. law. And third one is basically by factor addition or subtraction. Okay. So for example, There, are, there is a point where forces are acting in this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction. Okay. Particle you know, A. So this is that one, two, three, etc. Okay. So now if I want to write all these forces, this is this form looks like this. find out the result and what one has to do is one can one can first apply the repeated use of triangular law in which you expect the resultant R1 then after this this and this R2 right and this and this will give you R3 so R3 will be so, so first law, triangular law was applied here, second this, and third this, you get the result. 30 uh, force uh, component, like when a particle is acted upon by more than two forces. Okay. Now if you try to look at but the same thing using polygonal law, what it is done is, to say, so here, triangular law. Law is this. Now, if you are going to use polygonal uh, law, so polygon polygon law. Uh, so in this case, you will be having the so resultant will be just rather by connecting this. And finally, what you can do is let us say this is your so of course this is f one, f two, f three. This is f four, and this is r. And final in the vector addition, in which what you can find out the effect circle is. This is your vector addition. In this particular case, you can find out the summation of you know fx i is equal to how many components are there? One, two, three, four. So you have four components which will give you f one long x plus f two long x, f two long x plus f four long x. Similarly, you will only have i of y. Y, two of Y, three of Y, plus four of Y. Finally, the resultant R can be found by plus summation of F one Y is equal to Y. And then theta. Direction of resultant is this one. F I Y X Y two one two four one two. So 
these are the techniques to find out the resultant of uh, this now what i'll talk about is what are the components how do you write component of forces so these are you know when you are having x and y like to find even the vectorial uh, addition and subtraction form so we should have the components along x y or z so how do we find out components of given force first of all dimension form two dimensional case so if you have y and if you have x have f given here you know this theta. So f of x is given by your magnitude if and if f is equal to magnitude of this, so you can write fx is equal to f cos theta and that y is equal to f sin theta, right? And your f will be looking by fx. I if unit vector along this one is I, and unit vector along Y is K, that side of Y theta. Okay, this is for two dimensional case. How you will do it for three dimensional case? So let me say this is X, this is Y. So you can have this thumb rule, and this is your thumb rule, right? So let's assume that your f is given over here, which is f. This is given as theta. So you will have one component which is coming here. Okay. So and assume that this angle is phi. So what will happen? Magnitude of f is given by f. Then this component is given by f. Cos theta, which means that f z is given by f cos theta, right? This one is given by f sin theta. However, again you will have a uh, component on x y plane on x and y. So f x this component. F sine theta cos phi and this is F sine theta sine phi. So it means that your Fx will be given by F sine theta cos phi and Fy will be given by F sine theta. And obviously, if the magnitude of f will be fx squared plus fy squared plus f z squared. Okay. Now, there is a different technique. What will like you will have to first know that what is this angle and what is that angle. Now, if you try to if there is try to define the direction of the force. The direction of the force is given. You have to find out the component along x and y. How that has to be done. Component of forces. Okay. Obviously, this one is for the three dimensional case. Dimensional case, three dimensional space. Components of 
forces using direction cosines. So for example, let us say force F is directed along the direction having unit vector lambda cap which is given by cos of theta i cos of sorry theta si cos of theta y j and cos of theta z k so if you try to find out the component of you know uh, all these and if your f is the magnitude of f, the components of uh, uh, f will be given by the components of f is given by long. y and z directions are given by simply f times delta cap okay so it means that this will be f cos theta x i f cos theta y j plus f cos theta j k but what are this theta x theta y theta z the theta x theta y theta z are so this is the f okay and the direction of this one is given as lambda and z is your x this is your y. So in this case, this is your theta z, this one is theta x, and this one is theta. Okay, or you can just uh, you know, do it like this. This one, this one. Okay. So this is how your direction cosines are defined. So let, if these angles are given. The angle with this uh, particular line goes with x, y, z. You can write the direction cosines of cos theta x, cos theta y, cos theta z. You also have to, you know, be careful with saying that whether it is a uh, unit vector or it is a normal vector. If it is not unit vector, you will have to find the magnitude of it. The end of uh, uh, the part in which you find the resultant of the forces when two forces are given. When multi like there are more than two forces are given, what are the different techniques that you uh, find to do this, and how to really find out the component when you apply the other components in your components along different axes. So to get the you know, different components, what you really have to do is there are different techniques that I just uh, mentioned. But direction cosine based techniques are one of the uh, best method that one should always try to. Uh, this part is